Yeah. Hopefully it works. So we're live now. Yo, guys, uh, I'm not sure this is going to work properly because uh, usually I got it set up on YouTube. Um, actually, we're going blind on this. I usually got it set up on YouTube where I can just go live from something. It's asking me to download an encoder. I don't even know if this is working. Um, so are, are Chris Bulo at me? And people are starting to log in. Let, let us know in the chat if you're seeing uh, and hearing us properly. Um, we're going to keep this one short. We've got a lot to talk about. I'm going to share this, the, the stream key to everybody. Just hold on a second, guys, while I do this here. Um, seems like people are logging in right now. So I'm just going to go here. Uh, we're pretty beat up. We fished uh, for two days. Um, we had some decent weather the first day. Second day was a bit uh, choppy, but we got on some fish, eh? You had a good oh, yeah. trip? Oh, yeah. Yesterday, last year was a little better for size, but pretty solid numbers. Yeah. Um, so it seems like the connection's good. Uh, we've got 13 people logged in, so I guess everything's working, bud. Same. Everything's working. Uh, perfect. Hey, if you guys want to do me a favor... It's the first one of the year. I'm a bit rusty. I haven't posted a lot of videos, but uh, if you guys want to share the link to your social media, that'd be awesome. We, um, so, I wish I could read it. It's someone saying, what's up, boys? Oh, what's up, boys? Michael Peck logged in. What's up, man? Um, so, lots to talk about. Some product I want to talk about. What's going on with the Ice Fishing Show? What I'm going to do? Our weekend? Uh Chris is flying tomorrow. He just find that out that uh, so early. Some, I, don't know. So I have an 8 a.m. flight tomorrow out of Toronto. Or how far is the drive? Hour and 15 minutes. Hour and 15, but in traffic, two hours. Yeah, but the shuttle's picking up at 3:15 in the morning. Yeah, so oh, that's lit. Yeah, so he's got a shuttle picking him up. Luckily, our flight uh, we're at the same time coming back in. I was in for work, so I just picked you up at the airport. That was easy. Yeah, yeah that worked. That was like almost too easy. That worked out super well. The second you told me that, I booked the flight. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we got new mic set up, guys. It's literally uh, Chris walked in in here uh, on Friday. The whole room was a mess. I didn't touch it in a year. So, we got it all set up here. We, I cleaned it a little bit, but I don't have the stream set up. I don't even know if it's sharing this properly. Um, we're going to talk about ice fishing. Uh, what's coming up this year, but uh, tell us about the weekend. What you like the most? Like, uh, we went out for half, well, more than half a day, right? The first day? Yeah, probably like five hours the first day, and then that was like a good eight, nine hours yesterday at least, right? Yeah, the full day yesterday. Um, we actually got off the lake at one point yesterday to go fish another spot because we don't take the boat there. It's yeah. just easier to trailer up. Or yeah, trailer. You want to go through... A 10 mile run in the boat in Windy Simcoe if you don't have to. Yeah, we Windy saw Simcoe. one guy coming and then leaving oh, yeah. to fish super shallow, which is weird. But that's uh, that's what happened when I don't think like when you're coming to Simcoe for the first time, like if you would have came here for the first time and you ne never fished with me, what do you think would happen? Uh, just in general? Yeah. I might catch a couple fish, but I think they'd be small. But what, do, well, you would go look shallow, obviously, at first, right? Try probably start like fifteen to twenty, yeah. Yeah. But then I would lean. I would be marking a lot, but because they do get set up on really classic spots, some spots, and then some spots where big fish set up is just kind of like, why the hell are they here? Type of thing. Yeah. It's a mix of the two, so I feel like I would catch small fish, but definitely not big fish. It would take me a really long time, and even once you know what to do, then it's, it's definitely no guarantee. Yeah, and and you, especially you. So for the guys who don't know, Chris Bula has a YouTube channel. He's been doing this for way longer than me, and he's done it pretty much everywhere in the U.S. He's Not been a lot. But no, but like all the hot places. spots, you know, like spots that a lot of people dream to go to. Uh, you fished in Texas. You fished in Florida, uh, Wisconsin, Illinois. All those oh, yeah. pond videos. That's what people get addicted to, obviously. Oh, yeah, like those ponds. That's yeah. How, that's how I started fishing. That's, that's how we started. started fishing. Yeah. What a lot of people don't realize is the guys in Toronto is all those ponds are filled with large amount. Like even those drainage pond, like you wouldn't believe there's bass in there. Yeah. It just has to be deep enough. Yeah. So, well, yeah, because when it freezes over, there's enough oxygen for them to stay. Um, but 
so you fished also <laughs> saltwater. You fished in Colombia. Oh yeah. You've been in Costa Rica. Yep. So, what's your favorite destination you've ever been to? Um, the most epic and cool is probably the other Canada trip, British Columbia for surgeon. Yeah, Especially you love with everything going on there right now. I don't know how many more years you'll be able to do it. Like, it's just a really special fishery and fish because not only have that, but you have all the salmon running in too. Yeah, like I'm from wherever the hell on the map it is. I'm from Chicago. Like, we don't have salmon runs here. We don't have huge sturgeon and rivers that are however many miles from the Pacific Ocean. There, like it, yeah. it was just a very different environment from what I grew up in. Yeah, and they're big. Yeah, they're big. And so, what do they eat when they're up there? Oh yeah. What do they eat when they're in the, in the river? Um, we were catching them on mostly salmon meat and salmon eggs because we fished in October when all the salmon running it, so the sturgeon are gorging on the salmon. Excuse me. But I think throughout the year they get them on eel, like pike minnow. Like I just alive I ones or dead them. ones? No, I mean you can. Everything's dead. We've put whole salmon on a hook before. We put salmon heads, and the super awesome guys that have taken us out. Shout out Dylan and Dawson. Um, they pretty much when uh, when we were fished there, we didn't get them on salmon heads, salmon bodies, anything like that. But they said they have in the past. But it's like really big fish. Yeah, a whole salmon head. How long does it take you to bring that big fish you brought in? Well, it depends. The bigger ones we had, like the seven plus footers and the one eight footer, that took like thirty minutes, forty five minutes. They're heavy, man. I bet. Yeah, they kick your ass. They have a lot of stamina. It's not like a Goliath grouper where it's just super intense. And yeah, it's yeah. Over yeah. in a minute, and you didn't even really enjoy it that much. Yeah. The sturgeon are fun because you can't just. You got to manage your energy and stuff, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. So the main thing is, you know, you're a virgin to the podcast. I read beers. You I you rate beers. Craft beers, and he's got one of my favorite beer. He's drinking Sapporo's right now. So I got IPAs, I rate beers, and I try to be honest with my reviews. And guys, I don't know if you guys know, since my last podcast, I've literally pretty much quit drinking. I rarely, rarely drink. I'll have one drink and that's it. Um, but uh, so I'll review this one. Chris, if you want to review this one, that's the Nickel Brook Brewing Company. That's the Headstock IPA. Uh, you know, and I give him a little feedback here. Are these Is local it, beers? Most of them are uh, headstock Indian Pale. Uh, it's a strong beer, seven percent. So basically, I'm gonna drink this with my Crohn's, and I'll be wasted. Seriously, because I got Crohn's. I don't know if you guys know I got Crohn's. So that means my intestine lining is really thin, and the alcohol, instead of moving through easily, just stays there for a long time. So um, that's why I don't drink anymore, guys. But uh, for you guys, I'll review this one. This one is uh, from Burlington, Ontario. Nickel Brock Brewing Company. I'm going to have a couple sip, but we'll rate it when I feel like it's time to rate it. Uh, but so far, it's a good beer. So, British Columbia, favorite trip. And you go in the Fraser River. So, you think they're going to cancel it there, or what's going on? Laws? No, they just have. I mean, I don't know enough about the situation to speak on it. I've just been heard stories of, I haven't seen it personally, obviously, heard stories of all the local netting and the damage it's doing to sturgeon population and even the gill nets for salmon, too. When we were fishing, we found a gill net that had floated up along the river and like piled up on the piling and there were like six or seven salmon stuck in it and we cut them free, but they definitely would have died. I don't even know if they survived. To be honest. See, see, that's the thing guys in the world we freaking live in. And I like to keep it straight, not politically correct in the world we live in. There's so much sensible people fruits out there that if they see that they're going to do everything to cancel what we do. That includes fishing. You know, when you go and harvest stuff, try to be clean about it. Um, you know, don't overstockpile stuff and, and you know, show one fish. You don't need to show six on the ice. That offends people, and then we get pressured on, and they want to put more restriction on stuff like that, you know. Um, so be respectful, you know. That stuff like that hurts us fishermen, oh, yeah. right? We're all a team at the end of the day. Um so going back to the weekend. So we went out the first day with Chris and uh, our mission was to catch him a big fish. We went out, we caught him one big fish, but we still didn't break his goal of breaking his PB. We went out, caught a lot of fish the first day. Oh yeah. Quick. Well, was, we got a lot and you caught how many fish to my fish? Like maybe one to six. And we mocked a good amount of bites. You did, not me. <laughs> I definitely mocked at least five or six. And I lost was probably the bigger fish of my life that jumped off like oh, yeah. 
and it dolphins. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's body out of the water. yeah, it did you the flipper. So it yeah. you hooked this fish, he wasn't taking it seriously because the time sometimes those big fish he they just right at no, it. they just go and, and that's when he cast it too. Yeah, that fish they were so hot. I had we weren't even we were just casting out on this flat, and I was keeping my line, my finger on the line as we were uh as it was sinking just to know when it hit the bottom. And I knew it wasn't on the bottom, and just go boom, and I just tightened the drag and set the hook, and he was there. And then he swam at me, and all of a sudden, fifteen. Seconds you took him there. seriously once he was off the hook, and just going, yeah. see ya. I even saw it. Yeah, he got out of the water, and then he shook twice. And the bit, it's like a three quarter ounce jig head. So of course, that flew out of his mouth. And for a couple seconds more, he was half for at the water, least four or five his seconds, head just looking at me, like, look at how big I am. Yeah, see ya. Yeah. Oh, it hurts. I see Rob. Yeah, you're saying are you responding to the chat? A hundred percent. So ask your questions. Where I'm, I'm going to go through them, uh, whether it's ice fishing for me or Chris. Anything, ask away. We're going to pick the questions. We're actually reading the chat, so we're seeing everything, man. So thanks, Rob. So yeah, that 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 was a big fish. That was like, it's hard to say until you put them on the scale. That's one thing. Like you look at those fish on Simcoe, and you ask me like, what do you think it is? And and it's. Sometimes they're short and fat, and you'd be surprised where a two and a half pounder could be four pounds. Oh, yeah. And they're so dense. You know, when you catch them in the summer, they're like, you feel it's almost mushy. Like the the, the warmth, it's just like they're not. Yeah, the cold tightens them up. Yeah, up. it's all like, it's all muscle and stuff like that. So, um, well, their jaws are just so thick. Like they don't feel like a smallmouth. They're definitely like, when you hold these fish, you don't know, think it's as thick. Well. It's, yeah, you it's, don't think they're agile. At no, all. no, 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 no. They're just slow and lazy. And yeah, 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 yeah. But and we talked about this. Like cooch is attached to that, like coochaching, and you catch a cooch smallmouth, and it's a completely different smallmouth. It's thin, it's long, and you can feel almost your finger through their jaw when you grab them like this. There's no fat, yeah. and they fight much more. Like they'll they'll jump completely out of water three, four times. The fight will be more intense on a four pounder. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, those Simcoe fish still jump. They like, shoot out of 40 feet. Yeah. Be jumping in 10 seconds. Um, yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun. So we went out and we went looking for a big fish. Uh, we caught actually the big fish came, the biggest fish came the last drift of the day. Yeah, the first day. Yeah. And uh, we fished new areas. We had a little encounter. He, uh, Chris, <laughs> Chris got the sea bass full on experience. He was pissed at someone. <laughs> so I'm I, I I'm I like to keep it real, man. And I don't like to be, you know, putting an image and be somebody else behind the camera or anything, or as a person. So Chris, we fished like three, four times now together. Yeah. Yeah. And uh when you got me the first time, I'm the same guy the fourth time. And uh so I we're out there, we're doing a drift, we're really far from somebody. Like you can't even know the name of the boat, the brand of the boat, or what kind of engine they have. Like they're far. Like we're talking like two hundred yards, two hundred fifty yards. Oh yeah, at least a couple casts away. And we're doing our drift, and the guy gets on plane. Comes how how close was he to us on plane? Uh, well, he was like halfway on plane. He was like plowing a bit, and then he slowed down a bit, like probably 20, 25 yards away from us. Just kind of stared at and us. And just and stared at us the whole time, mean yeah. mugging. So, well, he took off on plane, like, right as he was coming parallel to us. We got super awake, but it just felt – I don't know who the hell he was, but it just felt very – Yeah, awesome. I know who the guy was, but that's the thing. Like, that guy, if you're going to have that energy and you see me outside of the lake, why don't you have that energy like that to me? Like, that negative energy and then cutting through a line like he did. Like that's that's my problem is people think they can uh be behind cars, behind wheels, and 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 then give the fingers to somebody because they're in a car they, they think they're protected, but like don't be like that. Like if you got a problem with me, just come and talk to me. Yeah, you know what I mean? Don't stare me the whole way like you're gonna mean mug me, but when I see you on shore next week, you're gonna be like, Oh my god, you know, I'm staying away. So I got pissed, I got on plane, and I just followed the guy. Said, bro, what's your energy? What's your problem? And all of a sudden, when I got to his face, like, oh no, 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 like, but you saw his energy when he passed through us. What it meant, right? Oh, yeah, I was just <laughs> so was anyway. So that's sea bass for you. But um, I'm a good guy, man. I don't have a problem with anybody. I'll take kids I don't know fishing and 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 promote the fishing industry. But if you're gonna step on my toe, I'm gonna push you off. I'm not gonna stay stay let you step on my toe and say nothing. You know, that's just a French in me, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you got to experience this 
But uh, so are you pumped for ice fishing? Oh yeah. You gonna do a lot of ice fishing this year? Um, I'm hoping to, yeah. Especially now that I'm gonna be living full time in Chicago, and I'll be actually able to go ice fishing. I really want to get big. Apparently, there's big perch in uh, Chicago Harbor. In the harbor? Yeah, there are like I think three or four harbors they get in. How deep does it get there? Uh, those harbors can be twenty plus feet deep. Yeah, so sure. they probably stage in there. They probably I just, st- yeah, I just know they're in there. I bet they're you get rainbows too. Yeah, yeah, that'd be sick. Other than that, I definitely want to come for perch and lake trout at least once here. So I know a guy really well. He, anyway, he's he's really close from here. He's a Aurelia boy, and he catches salmon like coho's on the ice. Oh yeah, no, that would be. I don't think I'll they're not big in Chicago, but that would be so cool. But it's. You only get that small window when that patch of ice is gone, it's gone. So it's a bit risky. Yeah. Um, but you showed me pictures, like they're not big, but like imagine like catching a four pound salmon up how much it would fight the little fishing rod. Oh yeah. So you can do that in like Duluth area, I'm pretty sure, on Lake Superior. Yeah. Yeah, I've never done it, but I'm pretty there's an area on Lake Superior that do it. It's got oh, wait, it's like when you went for a walleye, like on, on Erie. Everybody's like, yeah, Lake Erie's frozen once in every five yeah, years. That's like, well, that's the problem. You, I think last year they had one good day, but that's all it took. I had two buddies that went out. Like, I love ice fishing Erie because two of my best friends from college live within an hour or two from it. So they fish Erie all the time, especially for walleye. And uh, they got out one day last year. The ice was bad, dude. It was, yeah, I know, I know. But they caught two fish over 11, 11 pounds. Yeah. Did so you see that? Have you seen so? We have the MNR. You guys have the DNR yeah. uh, with Department of Natural Resources. Ours is Ministry of Natural Resources. You guys have way more money put into this program. So what they did in in uh, for Lake Erie, the DNR, they tagged over a thousand walleye. And what they do is they put buoys through the lake. And when the fish goes through, it sends a signal. Okay, that fish been through there. And there's a map. Have you seen that map where all the walleye, where they are in the winter? No. They're... Every single walleye are in one spot around Paley Island. In Lake Erie? All around. Well, it's a big spot, right? But in yeah. Lake Erie, they're all in the uh, southwestern basin. Oh, and, yeah. And well, as it melts. The, the huge basin, yeah. Yeah. It's as it, one as it melts, like, you, I'll show you the graph after. It's pretty cool. It's a four-year graph. And what they do, it's really cool what they do in the winter. You see them all coming back into Lake Erie and wintering there. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you can get around there and get on them, like catching big ones, be so much fun. Well, I fished the spawn there too. Like, they're, yeah, they're all. I thought you meant like one spot, like one hole. Because no, 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 no. I mean, like a one general area yeah. that's probably as big as like let's say Kuchichang, or like maybe even bigger. Oh, but it's all the yeah, it's all, all the all southwestern the bass, and yeah, yeah, because they come up. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure those are the fish that go into the Detroit River. I'm not sure if it's St. Clair fish or them, but I know they go up rivers like way on the west shore, the Maumee River, the uh sandusky river like there and then they i think a majority my buddy knows it a lot better than i do but i think only about 10 percent of the fish come in the rivers the rest of the 90 percent just spawn off in the lake on the yeah reefs, like all over the reef yeah i could see that i could see that we got big walleye here and we got one river they go into it's protected sanctuary you can't fish it but like there's 17 18 pound walleyes in there that go drop eggs in like eight inches of water oh yeah you see them they're as big as carps because there's carp in there and, and sucker minnows going with them. And they're they're massive. Um, um, so, yeah, the second day um, yeah, with Chris when we went fishing, um, yeah, we we went and tried, did, did different stuff. Then we got on a spot. You caught them pretty good casting. Good ones. Yeah. So uh, nice old, your perspective is skewed. Yeah. That so explain skewed. that. A fish that he thinks a four pound fish he thinks is just decent, but to a vast majority of people, a four pounder is a very big fish. Like I'm sure there are people watching that would love to catch a four pounder because I was there at one point. Yeah. Just live on the pretty much arguably the best trophy smallmouth lake in the world. So I think it is. And you fish it so much. So yeah. how many you've caught hundreds of four pounders, so you're like Yeah, you but you know what you're looking for pounds. once you got you you do tournaments out there and when you do a tournament and there's 20 30 40 50 boats um it's fish as small as you saw already just on the weekend it's not like there's 100 spots no. and you're splitting fish so if you can bring in 30 pounds 
that's a big bag but i'm going to tell you fun fishing i've had way bigger bags than 30 pounds oh, yeah. like easily because there's nobody out there there's no pressure on them right tournament day is always different but uh it's it's uh it's rewarding when you can go out there and 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 catch a bunch of six in a row you know and say oh that's a good fish and and be able to sit up four and a half is small it's good you know you catch a four and a half in cooch and you're like oh my god that's a giant you know any other lake other than the great lakes and 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 simcoe like a four and a half is like a, a monster fish um so we had a lot of fun doing that we found some new water too yeah we did find a couple of spots and that's like nothing on it it's so weird eh but then, yeah, there's just endless structure. If I if I live near this lake, I would. Yeah, but the last spot where we caught them before leaving, we've caught a bunch there. Yeah. Like, the, what are they on? You oh, know what I mean? They're small enough. They move. Yeah, but they're they're gonna winter there. I can tell. Yeah, but that spot's only getting better at the end of the year. Yeah, but they're just gonna move day by day. Yeah, but they'll still stay around. So there are endless things to look at around there. Pardon me? There are just endless things to look at. I bet you it's because the bait fish are around. Yeah, they don't need to go that's far. The other thing. They could just roam bait fish. Yeah. There are a lot of lakes in northern Michigan that are just featureless sand bowls. And the fish don't relate to structure, they just relate to roaming bait fish. So it's so it can be so frustrating. Very frustrating. Luckily, the Simcoe fish are not as much. They get roaming around August a little bit and they really start feeding up. A lot of guys like in, in late August, early September. A lot of guys struggle finding them. Um, you have to be on them early morning, and then they move. And it's been like that a little bit in October too. Yeah. Um, I think the lake is hasn't turned e either yet. So until it turns, you're not going to get steady like going out and always finding them in the same spot. They can go wherever they want. Um. But yeah, I caught a whitefish too the white weekend. Fish, the weekend before, yeah, just drop shotting. I'm like, what the hell is that? It was giving me massive head shakes, too. Is it a drifter? Yeah. Well, you know they like the drifter. That's no joke. We saw Peter. You got to meet Peter from Set the Hook out there. I did. That school was crazy, eh? That yeah, we went were, over? Well, they were so deep, too. But, yeah, they were like you the, the, fish. Yeah, over. Oh, more than that. Okay. You saw the underwater video? That's there. Yeah, they didn't eat anything, though. No, that, but that tells you it's a tough day when the small ones don't eat, man. Yeah. It's a really tough day. Um. So you came down, you tried some baits you wanted to, to try, and actually your bait that you come in, they, that's we caught all the fish on that. Yeah, it was a bait I hadn't used much. It was like a Biospawn Exo Swim. Just, it's kind of like a Kytec swim bait, but I think the action is... I think it's a smell, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's got a great scent on it. The action's good, and it doesn't rip off after every fish or two. Like I, yeah. That first one I put on, I caught like eight fish on it. Yeah, no, you're right. I like it. You're right, because there's no anything. salt in them. Yeah. I love that. Let's be, let's be honest. When you put a bait, when when a bait manufacturer will put salt in there, they do it for buoyancy, but the salt goes away. Once the salt goes away, that bait is porous and it'll break apart. So you have to be careful how how thick the grain of salt is because you can put thinner salt, but you got to be careful how much you put in too. Yeah. And salt, all, also the reason why they put salt, they don't want to tell you that. They put salt because salt is cheaper than plastizote. Oh, yeah. Right? And it takes a lot of space. Plastizote. Plastizote is a plastic. It's called plastizote. Oh. Or plastol or whatever. Plastic. But that's the plastic. That's... I did not know that. But talking about scent, and uh, guys, I created something that's going to, you know, I've been working on this for about a year and a half. I I believe in scent. It works, especially in the winter. Oh, yeah. I don't use it as much as in the summer unless I'm fishing spawn or, or bedded fish or a tube. Like, I'm, I'm never throwing a tube without scent on it. I never do because the tube you let you leave it there so you don't feel the bite sometimes on slack line right yeah. so i always use scent every three casts I, I use scent so i created my own brand of scent um i have two one is goby and one is uh herring so one's going to be lake trout bass um anything any lake that's got a herring and one is goby obviously for lake simcoe uh it's that stuff is super potent and what's really cool is it doesn't freeze in the winter yeah, it's petroleum based. It, right? Yeah, it's it never freeze. Like it's 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 a jelly and it stays a jelly. Although it might, you know, I've tried it and put it in my freezer for weeks, and it's still the same uh, texture. So it's easy to put on your bait, but you don't need a lot. So I'll have that at the ice fishing show. Uh, I've been using that for a year now. I was making my own, 
So that's wicked. Um, bunch of other stuff coming. You guys have asked. Um, this has been year in the making for me. Uh, I know that, uh, by the way, I forgot to mention, I'm going to get in trouble for this. Um, so Will at Wicked Custom Rods has made me rods. We're going to talk about them. They're right here. Um, he's made me, he's made you guys 40 custom rods that I've designed. It's really high end rods. It's you saw, you saw, I showed you, right? They're it's, really nice. it's the Cadillac of ice fishing and he's sponsoring the show. So he's, in the, he's the main title sponsor and I'm bringing him to the show. He's, he's coming, he's bringing his family. He's going to have rods for you guys. So that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. The Barry, uh, fishing show it's December 14th, 15th at Georgian college. And I got a boot there. How big are these shows? They're big. They're really big. They're like all the all the suppliers are coming. Um, you get boats, although it's a ice fishing uh, show. Legend boats there. Uh, all the local tackle shops are there. Uh, there's a few man manufacturing rods are going to be out there. It's it's pretty cool. It's my favorite show. Come get your ice fishing rods. Yes. So I got also my own line of rod uh, that I've designed. In. And remember, if you guys remember at the ice fishing show last year. I sold out in three hours of those rods. Not this year. I got about 600 coming. Uh, so I got a 36 inch and a 44 inch and designed with the guys I wanted, with the colors I wanted and the handles I wanted. So this, uh, these are a bit more affordable. So we're going to have those. So you, you'll be able to pick and choose which one you want. So those are very similar to what I use. So Will, you know, he... I've helped him design that rod and he wanted to sponsor the podcast and, and I've ordered two custom rods from him. Super expensive because it's all handmade. Like oh, yeah, there's perfect. nothing cheap. Like it's the best rod you can buy for yourself. It's designed and in, in, like you ask him for a blank, like you can't buy it anywhere. So he makes me two rods for Lake Simcoe in the fall. There's seven, six, uh, medium, you have the action tapered. Spinning rods? He may, I asked him, make me a spinning and a casting. They show up at my house Friday like this. Yeah, that's the problem with shipping rods. So I don't even want to take them out and look at them. That's the thing. I left them in there. Can I, I don't. Take them out and look at them? No, yeah, you can if you want. I just don't want to hurt myself even messing with them. Look at the spinning reel handle. Well, nice. When did these get shipped in? They shipped in Friday. He's taking him out of the package just to see. I'm like, I'm too butt hurt to look at this. But I'm going to rate this beer while he's looking at this. The Headstock IPA. It's a really good beer, actually. It goes down well. Cold. i say, you know, that's one of the best beer I had, eh? I'm quitting on this right now. They got some heavy ass tape on I don't blame you. Look at the handle on the spinning gear. Oh, I saw it. It was really nice. Carbon fiber, right? The top part? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't even want to open them. But anyway, I'm going to rate this beer. That's a good 8.2. I'm going to start strong. It's probably the highest beer I've rated. It's a good beer. Um, Nickelbrook.com. Nickelbrook Brewing in Burlington, Ontario. Cheers to you. It's a really good beer. What do you think of that IPA? Lake of Bays. Have you had this before? Mm -mm. You haven't? No. That's a lake close to here. Interesting. It's really good. Yeah? Yeah. I used to, in college, I drank a decent amount of IPAs, but haven't drank them much the last couple of years. But this is, it's not too heavy. So I like it. Yeah. It's a session. That means that they're less heavy, right? Oh, it's, it's yeah. It's not as intense. It's not as intense. Yeah, it's pretty refreshing. I do like it. If, if you're thirsty in the summer, that'd be a good beer. Mm -hmm. Lake of Bays. Small batch, handcrafted. What do you rate it? So 10 being, you know, you're on a dead bed, your last beer ever, you know, so don't go too high. Um, Probably like a good seven and a half. Yeah, that's a good score. Yeah. That's a good score. Very good. So seven and a half for the session IPA. Let me see this. Uh, from Lake of Bays Brewing Company. Paddle on. In partnership with Algonquin Outfitter. So that's good. They're promoting Algonquin. So Algonquin Park is not far from here. Oops, sorry. It's not far from here. Uh, it's a park. Uh, it's a it's, it's a national provincial park. Anyway, it's a park. There's so many moose out there. When you drive, moose? you gotta be careful. Oh yeah. How far is that? An hour from here, an hour and a half. I'm telling you, there's so many moose out there. You gotta be careful. They're protected. You right? go camping there, you see a moose. 
can't hunt them, right? No, they're protected. You can't hunt them there. Uh, I remember one time, first time I was in Ontario, we went camping there and we got drinking at night and I went peeing. <laughs> And I was so drunk, Mo like a, a cow moose walked literally in front of me. I could I couldn't have touched her, but she was really close, a few a few feet. I'm like, I'm too drunk. I'm hallucinating. And I went back, and the moose came around and made a lot of noise in the bush. All the guys got up and, and went and took it, and saw it. You know, it's there every. Yeah, I'm like, uh, uh, I'm dreaming this right now. But yeah, she she popped up like she's just walking through the bush. That's pretty crazy. Dude, I did in a. Right in like the suburbs of Chicago, right in the heart of the suburbs, there's a uh, there's a forest reserve that's I don't know how many acres, but it's the saddest thing. They have an elk pen, and it's probably just a ten acre caged in like high fence area where they keep a, a herd of elk. Really? Yeah, and it's so sad. They don't yeah. they don't get any movement. They just are stuck in this pen in the oh, middle of man. suburbia. They had a, a couple of years ago, like in this heat of the summer, like half the herd died. Really got too hot. Yeah, because they don't. Yeah, live, it's yeah. a mountain animal. It's a mountain animal. It's also lives in the dense bush where the dense bush is not yeah, as hot. Yeah, you got it in a quarter forested, ten acre area in a prairie. And why are they there? Like people just for so people can well, see the them. The city's called Elk Grove, so yeah. they oh, have elk there. I see, I see, I see. It's like the mascot of the town. Yeah, they have elk there. I don't, I don't get it. Damn. Uh, Aurelia Fishing is asking me if the shipment was insured. Uh, unfortunately, the shipment was not insured, so it's more the same. My fault in uh, Will at Wicked Custom Rod. Matthew Fishing says you got a six pounder on, on Friday on Simcoe. How a boy! Hell yeah, that's sick. Uh, yeah. I'm reading some of the comments. Somebody, somebody mentioned something uh rob said sea bass rocking the red wrx hat uh if you got any deer i've actually haven't had a chance to go hunt deer i haven't sat down it's been too hot i'm waiting for the rut so but i've been shooting a lot so i'm looking for that went for grouse today and uh as we walked into the trail the trail's not long it takes 30 minutes to go through it and every time i go there i spook grouse like crazy so i brought my shotgun with me i literally walk in the trail and and it, the trails banned for ATVs and six ATVs just run through. Wow, wow! I'm like, all right. They took dinner. That's done. They you know, us from having dinner. That's done now. I can't because you like grouse. Oh, I love grouse. I've only had it twice, but it's so good. Yeah. So, yeah, no, um, yeah, no chance on that. Um, so going back to ice fishing, what was your favorite experience when you came with me ice fishing? Uh, sight fishing the shallow acres. That was crazy, eh? Yeah, that was cool because it was it's just it's just the most different type of ice fishing. Most people consider fishing for lake trout the best fish to ice fish for. Yeah. And then the style of ice fishing, a lot of people consider sight fishing the best. Yeah. So combining them is crazy cool. And you remember when we did the big hole and we saw that big yeah, one come cycles, through? Like the first time I came here with my buddies, we were like, "Oh my god, you can see twelve feet yeah. to the bottom. You can see the massive perch." Yeah. So it didn't take us long until we drilled a giant square hole. You always have to mark your holes, by the way. Yeah. If you're going to do that, you have to mark them. Yeah, or re-put the ice block back in. Yeah. So we marked it. We did, we drilled yeah. a bunch of like weird holes with the K drill. But it was so fun just to sight fish for the big perch. And they were the best freshwater eating fish I've ever had. So that was an added bonus. Yeah, no, that was, uh, that was sick. I remember... We were boat pinned down and we're like zoned out. And you saw that mat. Remember that big one that came through? You're like, oh my God. Like oh, yeah. it just came through. Look at my tube and just veered off. And I think they heard us. I think she heard us. <laughs> it can get really intense. When it's a calm day and the ice is not cracking or anything, I think you got to be quite careful. Like you can make noise, it'll attract them. Well, they don't but, like being that shallow. No, they don't. They don't like it. They don't. They're they're vulnerable when they're there. They they literally like come and feed and they leave, right? But it's it'll be. Uh, are you gonna come down this this winter? Oh yeah, I'm gonna try to at least make one trip. Yeah, it's it's the most fun place I've been twice fishing. So if you live near it or blessed to fish it a lot, you are lucky. Yeah, last year I got a LB. We went to uh, um, we went out and the lake wasn't fully frozen as some. Shouldn't say that on podcast, but I some somewhat found a, a very narrow pass where I could get onto the main lake because the main lake was all it had believe it or not, from the east side, 
it cut all the northern bays all the way down to That's the big ice crack. All the way down to the southern tip of Kempenfeld Bay. So you could not make it to the main lake. Oh. I found a sneaky way to come through. And literally, I was like, I hope I can come back through here. Otherwise, I'm going to have to Uber it back, get my truck, go get my sled. <laughs> and we made it through. We were alone out there. It felt so good. And I'll be caught a massive, massive white fish on the lipless crankbait. And uh, right after I caught my, one of my biggest lake trout ever, it was massive. It still had the orange fins. They're so beautiful when they're like okay. that, eh? How shallow were you fishing? 25 feet. Yeah, that's pretty damn shallow. Yeah. Um, you got on some big uh, lake trout, eh, recently? Yeah, in Lake Superior in Standard Rock. That was that was probably, for any fishing trip of my life, that was the most epic trick of, trip I've ever taken, just in terms of catching numbers of trophy fish. Yeah. The journey to get there, too. <laughs> Like, it's not easy. Yeah, you're 30 miles-ish from land um, in Lake Superior. And where you launch out of, it's over 40 miles. Like, they're in Marquette. So, it's like a 40-mile, almost two-hour run. I slept in in the run out. My two buddies, Pat and Scott, they talked. I was just dead. I went then, like, in the bed underneath, I laid down a little bit and didn't even realize and just out. Wow. Yeah, for a good hour and a half, and then I woke up and it was just endless lake trout action. You take uh, you take anything for not to get like gravel, not to get seasick? No, I've never been seasick in my life. Man, Thanks I've been seasick. Like, I've been in some disgusting water in Colombia, dude. Like literally fishing in fifteen foot waves. Like the boat is like coming here. You don't see in between the swells, basically. Oh yeah, no, you don't like at all. Like no. when there are waves coming at us, like all we saw was a wave, like ten feet over the boat. We couldn't see shore or anything. Yeah, the boat goes like this. I've been in that. And like. Dude, I was I freaked out because all when we were traveling there, our suitcases were in the boat with like my laptop, all my camera gear, and when the boat's going like this around, it's slamming down back in the water, and the front compartment is where all the suitcases, all the luggage is stored, and it just body slammed down and on, and I was like, oh my! I thought my camera broke, thought my laptop broke. It was scary, and, and like right before the wave hits, the crew's running, and you're like, get down, get down, because you're on a popping deck fishing. And all there is is like a three foot high metal railing. It was really bad. Oh my god! Yeah. So I it, once you get seasick out there, you're uh, you're screwed, man. Yeah, you do not. My buddy Scott got seasick on that trip, and he just you sat down and you like, cannot get cool. fixed until you get to shore, and you can yeah. die from that. Like if you're in a long trip, days, you cannot drink water or anything. Dude, he had it the next day too. He thought he was gonna be fine in the morning, and he was just like, nah, not feeling it. That's uh. Aaron was supposed to come down, and I, I felt bad because I'm supposed to set up a table here, guys. Um, I don't know if you know Aaron's my partner, fishing partner. We had a great season this year, uh, fishing tournaments together, and we do most of the po- I do most of the podcast with him. Yeah. Um, but he was going to come down. I felt bad. I don't have. I want to put a big table where we can have more than one person, right? One guest. So, um, but I'm sure he's watching. Um, he, he offered to help, but. Uh, you know, I had to set all this up, so he's gonna be here probably next weekend. Start doing more podcasts with them. We got, I got more stuff. That's a, that's some of the more product. You know, a lot of JDM stuff, perch stuff. I'm gonna show it to you actually. I, I want to see what you think. You think this will catch perch? That should work. You think this will catch perch? Probably before looking at it. Oh. Looks like a little underwater bug. For sure, this will catch perch and crappy. And you know what's really cool is nobody got it in. That's what I like to bring. I like to bring stuff that you guys can't get anywhere. So I got a lot of that stuff in. Yeah. It's pretty sick, eh? That should catch perch. Are you going to put that on a jig hat, a spoon? What are you going to do with it? Put a little tungsten jig head. You know, I contacted your your buddy, Peric there. I said, hey, man, hook me up with some frostbite. But they don't sell to dealers, which is pretty cool, man. Yeah. No, he's you know, got a, order straight from me, and that's it. He's I like that. There. Yeah, no, it's like, you know, he's doing the right thing, man. I, I like that. Oh, yeah. You know, a uh, bunch of other stuff I don't want to show you guys, but I promise you this will catch fish. I'll show Chris. What do you think of those? Do you think this will catch a lake trout or a whitefish? Oh, yeah. Just kidding, guys. I'll show you guys. So some colors you guys might not have seen yet. 
Um, it's also a different bait. So we're gonna have those at the show. I'm literally gonna have hundreds of each. I'm not gonna run out this year, I promise you that. Um, we're gonna replace the vibrato with something even sicker. How sick is that one? That's an interesting design. Yeah, this is pretty sick, eh? So it looks like a mix of a blade bait and a lipless crankbait. Yeah. So I got this one coming up too in different colors. I feel like this would wreck smallmouth too. Yeah, for sure. I think so too, eh? What do you think, eh? Man, maybe I should put one in my pocket. It's not cold enough yet. Yeah, wait a I'll put this in my Do you pocket. Catch them on blade baits and some yes, kind of? nah, yes, actually. Um, before you came the weekend before, I threw a blade bait, like long bomb. I caught my biggest fish on that, and I and I was uh, with uh, with Josh, a good buddy of mine that don't fish him go often, and uh, he's like, "Do you ever catch them on?" I was like, "I never do." Like, they're really strict. And as soon as I said that, gong, I'm like, "Oh, six pounder." <laughs> Well, it's probably not the best of fish because there are so many zebra mussels and rocks down there. It'll get oh, snagged up. Yeah, and and for the problem is you're casting so far, I feel like you lose contact with the bait at one point. Yeah, and it's a very short striking window because once they put that in their mouth, they don't want to hold it. Oh yeah, right. Something that's soft, they they'll hold on to it for a long time, like a large mouth, like you said. You know, they'll keep a jig or a frog in their mouth for a very long time, right? Yeah, if you can, if you get a bite on a frog in your pre-fishing for a tournament or something you don't want to catch it you'd be amazed at how long they hold on to it most oh, yeah. people really see a frog hit like a, a fish hit their frog and they want to set the hook in the first second like you can wait 10 seconds and they will still have it the majority of the time yeah yeah it's uh and it's interesting what you know what size up to what size of bait you can use for certain fish like i went out um realis came out with a bait last year it's a realis uh apex vibe 100 it's one of the biggest grand bait you can buy yeah. oh i had it with me on the water fishing for smallmouth we tried something and oh, uh yeah yeah that thing was huge so duo was like hey we're doing we're launching this product here's some new baits so they sent me a tracking number with fedex and leave some japan and it's super fast two days it's here so i'm guiding one of the winners of the podcast like last year jordan and uh i literally own those in my driveway it's like hey fedex is here and uh do you want me to sign for it? i said sign for it what is it he's like oh it's from dual realis i took my sled and you guys will see i got this all on video which is cool <laughs> i literally take my sled rip down here grab it rip down there blew a belt fixed the belt got down there i'm like i got it i tie on this massive lipless dude first drop first drop like it barely touches bottom gargoon whitefish on that lipless bro on the big ass one and it had the whole treble hook in its mouth it's not like it was snagged i got this all on video you guys i haven't posted a video yet because <laughs> i want to keep some videos from last year and post them soon so i hope to post that you know late november maybe it's crazy oh yeah it's so crazy big appetite. well they get so big i think i yeah I think, but that the problem is that fish doesn't know how big it is it's never seen itself you know what i mean yeah it does it can't like how do you know what it's too big they don't have ants they can't compare stuff you know they got to put it in their mouth to find if they can eat it or not yeah so yeah Good point yes so yeah i'm i'm looking at some of the questions we're gonna end this guys soon vert it's chris is pretty sick actually uh, you got a nasty cold, eh? Oh, my sinuses are just screwed up. I feel like my voice is so nasally right now. Beer's probably not helping, but maybe it is. I didn't. How did I dress yesterday? Did I dress appropriately? <laughs> That's what you were. So the guy gets up in the morning. There's frost in the truck. Like, I literally have to warm up the truck before I can back it up to kill all the ice on it. That's what he wore yesterday. You had a jacket. Oh, I wore more than this. You had a jacket. That's it, bro. I wore, okay, to be fair, I wore sweatpants under jeans. Oh, yeah. And what did you wear for shoes? Uh, oh, like running shoes. That was bad. However, I had a like a t-shirt, a, 
of like a uh, what's it called a quarter zip, an inner layer, a Patagonia like outer shell, and a windbreaker, and a winter hat and gloves. My shoes I screwed up. I can pull the picture out right now and show them what you were. Do it. That's what I check. Wore. Check it. Check my Instagram or his Instagram. He posted a picture of Big Fish. That's what he wore. No, that was the first. I'm like, day. you don't want pants, bro. Like, I got winter pants. I got, I got big boots. And he's like, no, I'll be fine. And I you didn't say. Dad, I had to lie you I you didn't say it. nothing yeah, the well. second day. He just took it. But as soon as he got here, I got a, a, a dry sauna in my living room. As soon as we got it, he got undressed, started that bad boy, just sat in there for like half an hour. It was over 150 degrees, and I sat in there for over 25 minutes, and I didn't sweat, and I was cold the whole time. And, and then I took a hot shower, and I was still cold. And he came out, I was like, I can finally feel my toes. <laughs> but I didn't complain. No, you know, There didn't. were a couple times I was shivering real bad, but it was also because we ran over 30 miles yesterday. Like, we checked so many spots. We kept running. And he has a single console boat, so there's nothing blocking the wind. I was just sitting there going 60 miles an hour, freezing but, my ass off. Okay, here's the thing. I'm going to ask you. You're American. You see things a bit different. A lot of people are like, why aren't you getting two consoles? Why don't you care about your co-angler? Well, it's not that you don't care about It's him. not that I don't care about him, but taking that console out leaves me so much more space and less restriction to tie, to get up and down. You know what I mean? There's more room. I mean, it sucks. It sucks, but Aaron took it takes it like a champ. He comes ready, man. Oh, it's I don't care. I've never now you took it like a champ too, like more than anybody else I've seen for yeah, what you if were. You're on someone else's boat. You just can't complain, dude. The like, ride, if, the ride in the morning was a long ride. Oh, I was cold and I was dressed properly. Yeah, but I, I mean, I was bundled up. Like I was, I was literally in like a shell. Like I had my hands stuffed in my pockets. My hood was tightened up over. Yeah, I was good. You know what it is too. Once your extremities, whether your hand, your head, or your feet are cold, everything's cold. Yeah. No, I yeah. mean, I was I was fine. I was fishing fine. Those gloves saved me. If I didn't have gloves, and I almost screwed up in the beginning of the day, too. The first fish, I had my gloves on still, and I almost went to scoop them. Because there are times where I'm like, oh, screw it. I'll get the glove wet. That would have been such a bad mistake. <laughs> We're talking about co cold weather and my buddy Pat McGrath. So Pat McGrath, a.k.a. Woody, I've known Probably longer than anybody else since I moved to Ontario. I used to live in St. Catharines, Ontario, by Niagara Falls. Yeah. And he would take me salmon fishing. And uh, he loves fishing. So we were in Florida for an event, a uh, paintball event. Uh, it was the World Cup. What, no, not the World Cup. Uh, ICPL. I don't know. It's, it's a classic 10-man event. So I got back into paintball just to go play with the guys. So I was in Florida. Then they rented a house by a pond. And you know what ponds over there? They all have alligators. And Woody tells me, he's like, hey, Sebastian, there's an alligator over there. So let's go catch him. He's like, no, 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 no. I said, no, let's go catch him. Cool. He's like, ah, oh, I, I don't want to hurt him, you know. Yeah, dude. It's and, he, and, 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 and he throws a, I can't remember what he's, he was throwing a whopper popper. He's like, I don't want to lose my lure. I said, I get it, I get it. So we finished the event. I uh, say tackle store. There's tackle stores everywhere. I said, my buddy, pull over. So I grab a frog. I'm like, we're catching that sucker. Oh. God, you were that guy. No, so he tied. <laughs> he tie, I tie it on. He's got thirty pound braid, and the alligators they look small because all you see is their head. Oh yeah, you know the head's about this big. And uh, he's like, "What? How are you gonna handle it?" I said, he's, "Don't worry, hook him, put him on shore, and I'll handle him." And uh, literally, first cast with the frog. I think. Oh yeah, they'll eat anything you get near. Their head. I'm like, don't move it. If you move it, they won't want it. So move it, move it. And when they come to it, don't move it. For grabs him, hooks it up. Ugly stick, ugly stick is bent halfway. Oh, using ugly Fight, skate. Fights it, fights it, fights it. And literally, we're about to land him and it, snap, <laughs> it, it snapped off. It'll rust out. It'll rust out. And oh, you know what was cool? That pawn had like full on snapping uh, soft shell turtles. You know, the long nets, they look super slow. So I had horny toads, but I we didn't want to catch the turtles, right? You throw the horny toads, they eat the toad, but they wouldn't eat it right away. They would run like a fish. So you'd leave your bell open. They would run across the pond, and then you start bringing them back, right? You never had them hooked. No, no, no. We don't have a hook on the thing, right? Oh, there's just a horny toad tied to to a string. But it was just cool to how fast they could. Uh... Yeah, I almost grabbed it. Like it came to show, I was just waiting for you. Just want to be careful because those teeth, like they won't rip your arm apart, the four footers, but they'll take a finger for sure. Oh, yeah. No, for snapping sure. turtle can take your finger easy too. 
Hey, bud. So are we doing a trip down south this this uh, spring or what? Where are we going? Texas or Florida? Depends. I've spent the last three springs spending at least a week in Texas. I've gotten some. And you like that though, right? Yeah, I mean, I know the lakes, at least the lakes I fished. I know them. I have some knowledge on them. But you got some intel in Florida too. That's. I wouldn't say intel. I know that there are some lakes that I want to spend some time. I haven't spent. I haven't ever had my boat in Florida. I've had my boat in Texas like five times. So I've had the ability to explore and test stuff out in Texas. Yeah. The but, thing is, Texas also closer to you, right? Florida's another, what, yeah, 12, Dallas 16 hours? Is, from Chicago, Dallas is really not that far. It's only 15 hours. And I can get to East Texas in 12. Whereas, like, this area in East Texas, I can get to in 12 hours. It's really not far. Yeah. Now you're talking Florida, it's another 16 hours. Oh, Florida's, like, yeah, 19 hours. That's yeah. a big difference, towing the boat. Yeah. But uh, guys, I appreciate everybody checking the the podcast. I'm gonna post this on Podbean.com on the C ba- the the fishing podcast channel. You guys can download it uh, download it there. It'll be on iTunes as well. Just give me a couple of days. Uh, first little podcast. Getting used to, I don't know. YouTube rechanged everything the way they did things. Like you saw me struggle. I'm like, what the hell are you asking me for? Anyway, it's it's good. Um, so check out obviously his channel, his Instagram. Uh, your Instagram is Bula, right? Just B U L A W. Yeah, with just a C at the end. With, with a C at the end, and uh, obviously your your fishing channel, Chris Bula YouTube. Yep, just my name. You're gonna post that you uh, that uh, fishing video soon, right? Oh yeah. Well, there are many videos you need to post. And with the dolphin, just saying, <laughs> did the flipper dance at you? Oh yeah. All I saw when well, you said, "Oh my God, it's a big one!" It came out. It started going like this. All I saw is a swim bait going towards you. And you'd be like, oh, no. And just it went like for at least four seconds. Bah, 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 bah. It was so much bigger than the big one I caught that was close to. And you got it all on video, too. Well, not all of it. My with the damn chest angle to go for like my arm was. You got most of it. Of I saw it. Yeah. At least the first third when it first shot out of the water. Yeah. Which was tough to watch, but it is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. But all right, guys, we're going to sign it out at this. I appreciate all the support. Uh, what's up, Chrissy? Outdoors, you gal. Nice seeing you again. I haven't winterized my boat. Um, you know, mine probably not going to go. Actually, mine's for sale. My Are boat's a new one? Yeah, my, my boat's for sale. It's already sold to a marina. Well, you already sold it. So it's not. not no. That, they said, look, you bring it in. We're going to give you this much, which is super cheap. But if I can get more before that, then that's fine. If you yeah. got, I'd rather my boat stays local. If you guys are highly interested in my boat, it's not cheap. It's got a brand new engine. You saw that. It's pretty fast, eh? Yeah, it sounded awesome. Yeah, it's a sick engine. Um, full rigging kit on it. The engine alone, brand new, is $27,000. And I'm, Canadian? yeah, Canadian. And um, I'm selling the whole boat. Um, we can talk about the graph. So if you guys are interested with that. Do the but, waypoints come with it? <laughs> we can talk about this. We can talk about this. <laughs> but here's the thing before we end. Um, if you were giving me your boat with the waypoints, it don't really mean anything unless I know at what time of the year you're fishing those waypoints and how you're fishing them. Not necessarily. It can get confused. You saw how many waypoints I have out there. Yeah, it can get confusing. You'd be like, what are you, what are you hitting first on bass opener? What waypoint are you going to go to? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's true, but at least it's better than nothing. Yeah. That's for damn sure. Yeah. And I feel like you could look at the map and see, like, like if you have a waypoint of 50 feet, if it's pre-spawn, I'm not going to go, well, you can't really fish like pre-spawn. Yeah. Which kind of sucks, but yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, it's, uh, and my waypoints, I categorize them by icon and color. So you can do a certain icon with a different color for all of them. So I change the colors. Anyway. But uh, we're going to end it with this, guys. Give it a thumbs up. I appreciate everybody logged in. Thanks for your time. Thanks for Chris for being here, man. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. And thanks for hosting me yet again. No problem. Anytime, man. Anytime. See you guys. Oh, wait. I got I to gotta do it here.